The UDR cast is not affiliated and does not represent any 12-step fellowship. I, Bill Ward, the host of the UDR cast, will be sharing my experience and my journey of recovery. That does include, but is not limited to, the literature contained in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous and the 12 Steps. Our guests will be sharing their own path to recovery and what has worked for them. The UDR cast encourages and supports all paths to recovery. Welcome everybody to the UDR cast. UDR stands for Uncover, Discover and Recover. My name is Bill Ward and I'm coming to you from the recovery capital of Canada, Calgary, Alberta. Here we are going to discuss everything recovery, different perspectives, different experiences, both with the people I know and with others from around the world. If you resonate with anything you've heard on this episode today, we ask that you share it with anyone who you think may benefit from it. If you have any questions or comments, please find us at billward.life and send us a message in the info section. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. If you are interested in more recovery content, you can find the buttons for the YouTube channel and other social media outlets on the homepage, and you will be redirected to those platforms. We can recover, one person, one family, one community at a time. When I came into the program and and I was doing the program and I did step three and I did get on my knees and I did say the prayer, but I had no real idea what that meant. I just knew that I was listening to my sponsor and I just followed his lead and uh, did what I was told pretty much, you know, and I... I was reluctant that the program would work. I was reluctant that the big book, like, was, you know, how's a book going to get me sober and change my life? I, I wasn't really sold on the ideas in there. and But I just did it anyway. And so I did that step three prayer. And, and I finished the rest of my steps. And then, uh, you know, within a year later, you know, these character defects that I had asked to be rid of they were actually turning on me and really fucking up my life but i didn't really know what was going on because i didn't really understand the program so i just thought life wasn't treating me right just thought people were fucking assholes and chicks were fucking bitches and (laughs) you know i just you know i didn't know what the fuck anything and i didn't have any money I didn't really have a great place to live I didn't really have any like I used to buy myself out of trouble right I used to buy myself out of whatever it was I had enough money and it was easy to throw money around and kind of change my situation and get some relief from it and I look back and go I only got relief from it I never learned my lesson in anything and as I was kind of getting beaten down I remember I had to take a job once where It was a job that I had seen other guys doing 30 years earlier. And I'd watched these guys do this job, carrying these pipes in the winter, shoveling out these six foot ditches. And I'm watching these guys and I'm thinking, holy fuck you, sorry motherfuckers. I'm glad I never have to do that. Well, 30 years later, I'm doing that exact job. (laughs) And one of the reasons I started my own company when I was young was so that I could sleep in. Right? And it was actually one of my main motivators to kind of do what I wanted when I wanted it, manage life and range it to suit me so I could do whatever I wanted. While during that process, I was getting up at four in the morning and I fucking hated getting up at four in the morning. You know, another time I, you know, I used to run crews of two, 200 men or, you know, 50 men, 200 men, however many, I was always a boss. And then when I was in my early recovery, some people have heard this story. I, I was so broke, I had to take this job. This guy calls me, hey, you wanna fucking come and mow lawns for the day? I'm like, yeah, how much does it pay? And they're like, you know, 15 or 20 bucks an hour. And I'm like, yeah, I'm there because I'm fucking so broke, right? And I'm 40 some years old and I got no money. So I go and I fucking, and the last guy there and 
the lawnmowers are taken and there's one whippersnapper left. <laughs> so I grab the whippersnapper. I'm cool with it, right? And I start whippersnippering on this condo site and I'm doing a good job, I think. You know, I've owned whippersnippers before. <laughs> and then this fucking truck pulls up on this driveway and I think it's a homeowner that lives there at this condo. And he fucking gets out of his truck and he runs over to me and he fucking snatches this whippersnipper out of my hand. And I'm just like, whoa, dude. He's like, you're not fucking whippersnippering. You're scalping and ruining all the lawns. And I'm like, oh. He's like, go fucking sweep. <laughs> so I fucking, like, what else am I going to do, right? I fucking go sweep. I could yell and fucking scream, but I needed fucking, like, needed some money, right? So I go and I sweep. And I'm just, like, feeling the humiliation. And uh, I guess my point is, is God was building with me and doing with me as thou wilt. He was teaching me and showing me the situations in my path that I needed to learn from. And if I navigated those lessons properly, I could advance to the next level. It's kind of like a game, right? And if I didn't navigate those challenges properly, I fucking go back to the same lesson and life's not treating me right. And I fucking struggle and I'm in pain and I fucking think everyone's fucked and it's not me. But I learned those lessons. I fucking remember getting up at four in the morning, going to that shit job where I was shoveling snow out of the ditches and carrying those pipes. And I got on my bed and I fucking prayed and I thanked God for the opportunity to even make money. And when I got paid from that job, I didn't even make enough fucking money to pay my bills. Luckily, I had a landlord that allowed me to, to work with me and I didn't even make enough money. And, you know, there's so many instances in my life, in my early recovery, where I suffered severe fucking pain because <clears throat> I took the hard fucking road. And by taking the hard fucking road, I learned a lot about myself and I was able to let a lot of shit go. And there's a saying that my old, one of my old sponsors said, the beatings fucking continue till the lesson is learned. And the beatings did continue until I surrendered and the lesson was learned. And then I could advance. And through those track records of what creator's done for me, I don't, I don't fuck with that shit anymore. I learned my lessons. I don't fuck around running my own life, being convinced that any life run by me is not successful. Even in the smallest micro fucking decisions based in self, I caused fucking carnage in my life. Little white lies blew up in my face. My daughters wouldn't talk to me for fucking months and I didn't know I was even lying. It just fucking happened. And it was all because I wanted to see my girlfriend for fucking an extra three hours. Just decision based on self after self after self after self. And like your normal person just thinks it's just nothing. That's just life fucking them, right? I know today. I know today. I send a text message. What is it? Is there self in there? Is there an expectation? What am I looking for in that message? Are they going to answer me the way I want to? Because if they don't, that's a decision based on self and I build resentment. And I harm people with fucking everything I do. So I've learned through the process of a step six, living in step six, the fucking humiliation and pain of learning what God's will is. And I've gotten to a pretty good place in many aspects of my life where I have a step seven surrender in my life. And I love step seven. The most profound result of all was our change in our attitude towards God. God becomes the attitude. God is almost in every thought and every action, everything that I fucking try to do in my life, he's there. I try not to hurt people. I try not to take from people. I try to fucking give rather than take. And the line in the book that says common sense has thus become uncommon sense. I didn't really understand that line. It didn't make any fucking sense. Just like the spiritual axiom that every time I'm disturbed, the problem is within me and it's not you. I didn't fucking believe that. But through the processes of working this program, and especially that step, step 10, which is step six in live action, I've learned that the problem's always within me. If I'm angry at you, I'm actually angry at me. If I'm resentful at you, I'm actually resentful at me. But it takes a long time to figure this shit out, and I think the only way to figure it out is actually following the exact directions. Otherwise, to be willing to work for humility takes most of us a long, calm, a fucking long time. 
it hasn't taken me a long, calm, a long fucking time because I was fucking sick and tired of fucking me. And when I got sick and tired of me, I fucking got well. And I continue to get well, and it's a journey, right? Thank you for tuning in to the UDR cast. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. The viewpoints and the opinions expressed today were solely of the individual sharing them. If you resonated with this episode, please follow us and share this link with anyone that may benefit from it. Please visit us at billward.life to see everything that we have going on. We can recover. One person, one family, one community at a time.